Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Brittany. And I'm Craig. And today we're going to be talking about things that you can do at home to start treating a muscle strain and then certain things to avoid as well. Oi, I pulled a muscle. <laughs> so if you sound like that, then make sure that you subscribe to our channel, click on the bell so you never miss notification and watch the rest of this video. All right, so let's say that you're working out in the gym and you pull your back, right? Okay. So you get that sensation, something that you moved a little bit further than you should have. Maybe you lifted a weight that was heavier than you should have. Either way, it's a pretty immediate feeling and you're gonna know when you cause some damage right away. I always liken it to the, the stripes that we drive in the car, right? Our car stays in those, line, those lane lines and the minute we go outside those lane lines, we're just asking for trouble. Yeah, like when you hear that really loud <laughs> yeah, on the side of the road. We want to make sure that we stay in our lane lines. That's not to say that we should stay there forever because we want to train our body to have as wide as a berth as possible so that we can do whatever we want to do, whether it's gardening, whether it's working out in the gym, getting down on the floor with the grandkids. We want to be able to have that mobility and stability within that mobility. Absolutely. But sometimes things happen. Yeah, and that's life. You're going to have pain. You're going to do bad things. So if you did the wrong movement, you feel that muscle strain, what a common misconception is, is that you wanna go and stretch it because the stretching is gonna feel good, right? So let's say if we're talking back and we pull the muscle in our lower back, the sensation of going into that stretch over to the side is gonna feel good. It's gonna initiate a response in the muscle and that stretching sensation is something that your body perceives as a good pain. But in reality, if you overstretch that muscle, it right. doesn't really make sense to go in and stretch it even further. Right. What we wanna do instead is move within that pain-free range of motion. So let's say this side bend over here is where you start to feel that stretch sensation. You would wanna go just from here to here. So starting from that uh, initial position and going just to the point where you feel it. So moving within that range that your body has available right now. So you don't stiffen up like a board and not move your body for the next three to five days but you get that movement within the tolerance of the muscle for right now. Right, so just to review, what we're talking about is creating movement in a positive pain-free range of motion. This is not a myofascial release. We're not holding a stretch for three to five minutes. We're moving in and out of a pain-free range of motion to teach our brain and our body that it's safe to be in this movement environment. Exactly, and then the other kind of thing that we can do, there are different contractions. So think about bicep, we lift a weight, concentric, Lowering is eccentric. Isometric is when we just kind of hold in one place and create some resistance. Okay, so what you can do for this, I'm gonna come off the table and Craig can go ahead and lay on your back. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> lost your glasses there a little bit. So we're going back into that movement. So playing with some pelvic tilts here, you can rock the hips one direction, letting the hips come up towards the rib cage and then rock it down the other way, let the hip bones come away from the rib cage. You might find a spot where same thing as the stretch, you get a little bit of that discomfort or maybe that stretch sensation. You wanna go just before that, and then you're gonna hold that movement there. So get kind of like to the neutral pelvis where your hips are stable and steady. Take your hands, put them right where your hip bones are. Okay, and then I'm gonna have you actually stow it right about here. So put both okay. hands here. Thank you. And then belly button's right in the middle you're gonna walk about halfway between belly button and hip bones, okay? With your hands in that position now, I want you to exhale all the air out of your lungs. Good, nice and slow. Towards the end of that movement, you should feel a muscle that kind of wraps around the belly, creates a little abdominal brace sensation. And then once you feel that, now I want you to try and hold that, but breathe normally. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's kind of hard unless you're actually doing it. So go ahead and do it with the video. If you're sitting in your chair, you can do the same thing. Exhale that air out nice and slow. When you get to the end of that exhale, your lungs are out of air, you're gonna feel that tighten up. And I know people always make excuses that they've got belly in the way that you're not gonna be able to feel it. I promise that you can. Maybe you just gotta dig your hands in a little bit deeper, okay? Right. And with that, now that uh, position of the pelvis, engaging right there, we're getting that isometric contraction. We're just kind of holding that stability there to support the abdomen and the low back. Every muscle is gonna have a different kind of isometric. If we're talking hamstring strain, then we're gonna do something along the lines of bringing the heel down, toes up, and almost like you're sliding the foot towards you, but you're not actually moving. None of this is with a movement, it's just a hold. And when you get that hold, you get that sensation of the muscle being activated without shortening or lengthening, then you're gonna hold it there. And I usually like to do about 10 seconds, 10 times, and you're gonna do these frequently throughout the day. Because again, same thing with the stretch, we're trying to get something activated in that muscle but without overdoing it. So you're not gonna go and do hamstring curls the day that you pull your hamstring. You're not gonna go and do your heaviest squat the day that you pull your back. Definitely not gonna do that. Okay, and then once you get through that, this is to get you out of that strain, out of that pain, 
and then we go into strengthening and mobility from there. Awesome. So what we're talking about here is in the initial stages of a muscle pull or a muscle strain where we're having acute sensation, we're trying to activate the muscle in a pain-free positive environment. So we, like Brittany's saying, we're not gonna go squat after a muscle strain or a muscle pull, but we are going to use that muscle appropriately, whether it's in an isometric position through here, and we're gonna fire that muscle and then allow it to relax. 10 second hold, 10 seconds off. If we're talking about the low back, what we're talking about is this strap muscle that comes right across our belly here and finding that position, right? So we don't wanna do pelvic tilts into bridges because we're gonna go through that painful range. We wanna find a neutral pelvis and engage through that lower abdominal pelvic floor. All right, and we just use those two examples because those would be the most common strains that I see people complaining of in the clinic. But if there's something specific that you need to see, just drop it in the comments and we'll be sure to address it.